Uh, I've been on hot since Haiti, which triggered me to get involved. And I have trained youngsters in the Netherlands, in Curaçao, and on Jamaica to map with OpenStreetMap. First of all, I feel privileged that I am born in the Netherlands. Uh, I feel it's one of the safest countries in the world. And as a Dutchman, I have the uh, uh, privilege or right, it's my duty to get a bigger table and not build bigger walls, which is a meme that's been going around uh, a lot lately in the Netherlands. That's my personal opinion. So, what's interactive community mapping? Basically, the world map has a large document describing that, and it holds two main purposes, which is empowering communities and improving service delivery. And the latest I've put between brackets, because uh, when I went to Jamaica, uh, they decided to focus on empowering communities and look uh, for, for specifically for tourism solutions. So I went there to train locals, to train locals to map. That was basically the only uh, goal I was given. I had one week to do so. And during that process, I also was triggered to explain economic value to the mappers. What can you do in the future when you've been te taught how to map? And uh, when you enhance tourism with mapping, will it bring economic prosperity? I was honored to work with a great team of very dedicated youngsters and staff. With one week of training and four weeks of remote support, we mapped about 90% of Augustown, which was their local community. So this was basically the result. We added a lot of building street names and house numbers, and we took pictures and posted them to Flickr, just to make sure that Augustown started becoming a real lively community. We also mapped historic sites and decided to create a tour app for the 178th anniversary celebration in Augustown. Uh, Jamaica uh, got rid of slavery 178 years ago, and Augustown was a hub where, the, where a pastor was preaching that was very important for the uh, Jamaican community. Um, the goal was to attract tourists, employ guides, and introduce tourists to local products, so get that economic value going. And in the, in the future, the community would really like to attract uh, tourists from outside of Jamaica as well. Augustown has a rich, uh, mainly unknown history, even to the people of Jamaica itself. It is the place of Alexander Bedward, who was a very important pastor in the process of getting rid of slavery and emancipating Jamaicans. Uh, it has a natural holy spring and an underground cave, and it's the home of Sisla, who is uh, at the moment one of the most famous uh, reggae artists from Jamaica. And one of the components of the tour, the touristic tour they, uh, they created, was uh, uh, attracting people to local products. So there was an artisan market where you could even buy cannabis tonic wine. It attracted a lot of attention from uh, various professionals, from ministries, from companies, and they were all amongst the first to do the actual tour. And uh, overall, the tour was a great success. So when I left Jamaica after a week, uh, develop developing the Caribbean, DEFCA, decided to host the Zika Hackathon. And they gave the mappers from the Augustown community a wild card invitation. They said, hey, you guys are not technical. You don't know any IT. You can't build any apps. But would you be so kind to come and check and see what you can do for Zika in relation to mapping? They had no technical map background. They just learned to map. So the mappers, who had no higher education, who were no scientists or researchers, decided, well, if we look at Zika, can't we look at mosquitoes in a more generalized form? And, and what are mosquitoes? What do they do? How do they live? How do they move? And might mapping be some part of a possible solution? 
Well, you all know mosquitoes, of course, uh, except for Iceland and some remote islands, there's hardly any part on the world that hasn't got uh, native species. But a lot of mosquitoes travel also, and they mainly use human transportation to provide for their travels, to go by ship and by airplane. In many species, female mosquitoes bite, and they feed on blood of us and of animals. And as you may all know, they, they, cause, uh, they are a vector for various very nasty diseases such as malaria and Zika. <coughs> and mosquitoes are the vector for a lot of deadly diseases. Zika is the most recent discovery, but what's going to come next? Will, if we fight Zika, will we fight any future disease? Basically, the, mapping the mappers thought was very simple. They said we can fight the symptoms, which are basically uh, uh, temporal solutions to fight the mosquitoes, like spraying, or we can fight the cause and see if we can get less mosquitoes on this planet. So as you all know, mosquitoes have a certain life cycle. They lay an enormous amount of eggs, and uh, these eggs grow to larvae and pupa and end up as adults who, again, produce eggs. For all this, water is needed. And basically, mostly stagnant water, water that is uh, stands still. Mosquitoes do not like humidity above 95%, and low humidity is, is even deadly for mosquitoes. So ideal is between 30 and 85% humidity. Uh, mosquitoes tend to die during abrupt fluctuations in temperature. So if it's very hot on one day and very cold on the other, uh, the life cycle gets disturbed, which causes mosquitoes to die. But of course, it's very, very hard to control these conditions. So the map has decided to look for a common ground, a higher goal. How can we fight mosquitoes? And uh, we are lucky that good health and well-being are sustainable development goals. So this might mean that people with money are uh, uh, eager to provide people without money to help them reach the goal of eliminating mosquitoes. It's a very economic, simple way of thinking, but it might have some, some tongue. And, uh, Although this is slightly ironic, mosquitoes do not distinguish between rich and poor, which is basically a good thing for poor people. <laughs> so it's a common issue to tackle. Well, the mappers went out on their regular mapping rounds just to, to map the community, and during this mapping they found a lot of waste in various areas in August Town. And this waste contained a lot of standing water, of course. And standing water is an ideal breeding ground for mosquitoes. And they found more waste. And they found pollution in streams. And they decided to simply create some sort of reporting app where they could put the pictures on Flickr, connect that in an application with OpenStreetMap, and simply tell the story about where mosquito problems might occur and where waste was in their community. The mappers still needed nothing more than phone with camera and a little GPS. So they wanted the, the map ways to be open and for everybody to see. And I started looking around on the internet and came across the Open311 protocol, which some of you may know, which is uh, a protocol to report to your government, basically. It had a wonderful front end, open source front end, which we could introduce. And they found a way to map these reports about waste in a simple, visible, open way. The concept was ready for presentation. And we were all very, very glad that these mappers, which uh, were for the first time in their life in a hackathon between all these technical people, ended up third place within 20 teams which was a very good score. And they were immediately spotted by the Ministry of Health. And the Ministry of Health said, I want to talk about your ideas and see if we can take it any further. So why is it so important to map waste? It's important so the Jamaican government can start to eliminate waste. 
And with this, they would facilitate at least four mil uh, sustainable goals, which is also good for their uh, uh, common goals. Now, wouldn't that be a great achievement? So with the industry of the Ministry of Health, the mappers organically rolled into the second part of the World Bank definition, which is improving service delivery. By telling their story, by reporting the waste, the government gets the chance to improve service delivery. It brought the mappers into the uh, government office, which is very special in Jamaica, if you get all the way up there, in an official visit to the ministry, and they are now in the process of seeing how they can continue this further on. Which brings us to Sustainable Development Goal 17, which is partnership for the goals. And wouldn't it be very good if the public would partner up with the government to get the Sustainable Development Goals running? So the final conclusion for me as a Westerner, it's, uh, it's, it was very new to see that in the Caribbean area, waste is not handled the way we do in Europe. In Europe, waste is a real business. You can create economic value. You can get a good living from handling waste, which is completely the opposite in the Caribbean. So local mappers can map this waste, and it's a government call to action, which hopefully in the long term will lead to employment for the poorer people to eliminate the waste and end up as a sustainable solution. Any questions? These are the partners that uh, made the, uh, the mapping possible. Uh, there's Twitter for ICM Jamaica and there's a website where they put all their efforts up. Any questions? Mm -hmm. So I'm curious if they have data also about the infection and if they kind of see if there is a pattern, like okay, here are some more and this is a more infection or not. No, and basically the winners of the hackathon were a couple of developers that created an app where the public could uh, say, hey, I'm infected, I think I have Zika, can you help me, which came into... Yeah, but that's, that's the technical solution. The biggest thing here is getting this connection to the government and making sure that the action following up on the map, the story that the map is telling, will really come into place so mapping really gets eliminated. So it's a narrow focus, but there were more solutions. Well, for this particular solution, the, the, the answer is in the temporal data. So the, the locations of the waste, which will hopefully disappear in the future. Uh, but in countries like Jamaica, this is not uh, commonly visible. So the, the public that notices that they need a certain solution have no story to tell as long as they don't map. They need the map to support them in telling stories to the government, to calling the government to action. That's that's my personal opinion. Maybe you have another idea? You know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a mosquito expert, but um, I do know that a fair amount of work is put into monitoring the mosquitoes, and you know, there's who knows how many types of mosquitoes out there. There's a lot, and only certain types carry Zika or malaria, and they do create maps that kind of show the distribution of these, which changes over time with different seasons mm -hmm. and stuff. So maybe. Um, Knowing at least where they go and when they go where and trying to analyze that might could possibly be an approach. 
There's also a lot to gain uh, in open data because I was looking for a map that showed the global Zika spread and I came ac across one from, uh, for malaria. And I was looking like, hey, can I alter the data so I, as a GIS specialist, can create the same map for Zika, which was ha almost impossible because the data set was so technically and hard to, to look into. Yes? Because they want. Because it's basically the, the low cost uh, way of doing this. All the tools are available for free, the map is available for free, and you have full control over what you put in there. Uh, as opposite to, for instance, Google. Uh, on Jamaica, there is no, no national map which they can add to. They, they have to look at OpenStreetMap. It's basically the only alternative they have. Do you want to answer that? I don't, I don't really have a good answer for that other than you know, the capacity of the local government would probably determine whether that was going to be possible or not. Some government has capacity than others, but I'm not sure that that's really potentially a good In Jamaica, it's the most important step and the next step they are taking um, to get the government really involved and also to have a feedback loop where the government reports when waste has been collected. And that's a discussion that the mappers are currently in, supported by the Mona School of Business on Jamaica to make sure that that starts to come in motion. Any other questions? I think the presentation was really great, so I want to go back to Janet, if I, if I could. Um, so Janet, a lot of the podcasts ask all the time about data privacy. We're always responding to these questions, so I don't know if I missed this in the beginning of your presentation, but I'm curious, in dealing with an issue like FPM, what go, what's appropriate to put in OpenStreetMap and what's not? Are there some things like the safe houses that are not mapped and any other things of interest for, for the group? Um, well, we're working with one safe house, which is actually in the town of Medina, and it, and it, it is very clearly signposted. Because we actually want to be able to find it. Mm -hmm. So, in, a, in this case, it, um, it, it's not an issue. Um, and what we'd like to do um, going further down the, the road is there are volunteers in the villages where um, the girls are most at risk. So, to actually flag up their um, place so that the girls can find them would uh, be something that we want to do in the future. So, it hasn't really been an issue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, essentially, everything's not. <laughs> More questions for Janet as well? No? Of course, there's things like personally identifiable information that 
we never could have known. <laughs> yeah, Brene is an expert on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. But I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess the question I would follow on is like, um, do you do post assessment at all to evaluate um, if, you know, if there are unintended consequences that you could have had for the community and also the context of the assessment? I think one of the topics that Heather Lucian is leading is around more research within hospital. So this is something we see at least about the unit. Or if there's universities or researchers who are interested in how we work to get started. Yeah. Yay. <laughs>